Glad to have you here today. Uh, welcome to all those joining us online as well. I'm Pastor Zach. Shelly and I serve as lead pastors of this great church. So glad you're here today. Uh, a day as we get into what we're calling Freedom Week. And so I want to ask the question, are you living in freedom? And I mean real, like, like soul freedom. If, uh, if I were to sit next to you with a weekly review question. We can review a question of when the word freedom comes to mind, what do you think about? Could you have inserted yourself to say, I think of myself, that I'm living in freedom? I think too often we don't. We don't really step into the freedom that we're offered in Jesus, not fully. And so my hope today is you do, that you live in it, you walk in it, you know it. That's why the, the message title is, this is how it feels to live free. I, I want you to walk away with that feeling today, freedom for yourself and freedom for others. If we're honest with ourselves, we live in a world that enslaves people. Digital devices enslave people. They can. I'll go out to dinner with Shelly, and I'll take a look at other couples sitting across from each other on their phones. You know, I don't know. You want to, I, I, you know, I at least want to smack the guy. Come on, man. She's sitting right across from you. Put down your phone and talk to her. We get enslaved by digital devices. We get enslaved by our work that we start chasing after. We can get enslaved by our degrees to say, once I earn this degree, you know, then I'm going to step into this great job. And once I get this position, I'm going to step into this position. And you just, you're chasing after things that can enslave you before you know it. Enslaved by our emotions. We allow our emotions to dictate how we live. There's lots of things in this life that can enslave us. But we know the one who came to set us free. So I want you to live in that freedom today. The reason we're doing something called Freedom Week is last year we uh, did something called Soak in the City. It was Wednesday night, Slater Hill. We kicked off in August with that, our connect groups that way. And we just sang songs of Jesus over the city to say this city is meant to live in freedom. The Purdue campus is meant to live in freedom. The kind of freedom that only Jesus can bring. So we started that way. And then we, this will be our third year of doing a, a 5K, a Freedom 5K, to support organizations, Free International Project Rescue, the fight against human trafficking and sex slavery. And so we just felt like, you know what, part of what we get a sense of what God is wanting to do is we head into a new year. We run on an academic calendar, so this is a relaunching point as we go into the year, is to say, why don't we at least one week a year just focus on the theme of freedom? Because we've got people that are bound to lots of things, and we're not meant to live that way. We're not meant to live as slaves. We're meant to be free in Jesus. We're meant to have new hearts in his name. And so that's what we want to do today is we want to kick that off with a message and invite you to other ways that you can live free and invite others to live free too. So we're going to head into John chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles, hey, I hope you've got a Bible today. If you don't, it'll be underneath the chair that you're sitting in or in front of the chair that you're sitting in. Um, we want you in God's Word. And we're going to jump into Luke or John chapter 8. I'm so used to being in Luke. We'll be back to Luke next week. John chapter 8, as we focus on freedom today. So I'm going to invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word. We stand to highlight that these words that we read are God's. And then we talk about those words. And so we're thankful for God's word that he gave that to us. So we're going to be John chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. So the crowd that Jesus is speaking with, they're responding to Jesus. They said, We've never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is a part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. These are the words of God. You may be seated this morning. As we examine these words, as we look at the freedom that we're offered in Jesus, the first thing we find is that for us to live free, we must obey the teachings of Jesus. For us to live free, we must obey the teachings of Jesus. Jesus begins. So the setting here is that Jesus is in the temple courts. He's in Jerusalem. There's the Feast of Tabernacles that's happening. So he's interacting with the crowd that's there. And he's talking to them. And what does he share? He says, if you are my disciples, you'll be faithful to my teachings. And then he adds to that. And if you're faithful to my teachings, you're living in truth. And if you're living in truth, you're living in freedom. So we can follow that trail all the way back. To live in freedom, we've got to live in truth. To live in truth, we've got to live according to the teachings of Jesus. That message is for us today. This is why as a church, we're walking through the New Testament book of Luke. I want you to live in freedom. 
And I know part of the piece to that is that we follow the teachings of Jesus. And that means we don't get to follow the, just the easy ones. You know, the, the ask, seek, and knock, that's awesome. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be given. That's great. But what about bless those who persecute you? What about being a peacemaker, going into difficult locations? That's the thing about peacemaking. Like we want to live in peace. That's not what it says. Jesus says be a peacemaker. You know what peacemakers do? They go into conflict zones and they bring peace. Are we living according to that teaching? If we want to live in truth, if we want to live in freedom, we've got to live according to the teachings of Jesus. And how, what else does he teach about? He says, don't judge. He says, don't judge. What else does he say? Treat others like you want to be treated. What else does he say? Don't live an anxious life. Don't be anxious. These are all things that Jesus talks about. So as we get into and continue in their study in Luke next week, I want you to start taking these teachings and following them. Because I know their truth, and the truth is what sets you free. For us to live free, we've got to live according to the teachings of Jesus. But what else do we find from the passage? So Jesus is interacting. He says, if, you're, if you follow my teachings, you're living in truth. If you're living in truth, you're living free. But then the crowd says, but we are descendants of Abraham. We've not been slaves. But what does Jesus say? Well, but if uh, you sin, you're a slave to sin. So the second thing we find is, for us to live free, we must recognize we were born with evil hearts. That's how we start. If we don't recognize the problem, we can't, find, we can't go after the solution. So we first have to understand. So what he's trying to help this crowd understand is, look, if you sin, so what is sin? It's just falling short. It's, it's not meeting God's glorious standard, which his standard is perfection. None of us can reach it. Paul writes about a New Testament follower of Jesus that we all fall short. So we first start there to say, you know what, I fall short, but do we end there? No. We know where the answer comes from. So even though we were born with evil hearts, what did God do? He sent Jesus, his son. Jesus is the answer for our evil hearts. So once we know the problem, we can go after the solution. Jesus is the solution. Jesus is the one who sets us free. He gives you a new heart. We do water baptisms about once a month usually. And we always tell people, as you go down and you come up, you're a new creation in Christ. So you're not left to your evil hearts. Jesus comes in and he gives us the answer. For us to be free, we've got to recognize we've got evil hearts, but then we go after the solution, Jesus. He sets us free. But what's interesting, so Jesus gives that line. He says that the one who the Son sets free is truly free. Some versions say that they're free indeed. I was listening to a message, and a pastor was working through this, this verse, and, and so he said, you know, he, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. He's like, I don't know what indeed means, but I want it. You know, whatever the indeed part is, give it to me. You know, I want to be that kind of free. That's the freedom we're offered in Jesus. But, but as a pastor, I've, I've met with too many people that they feel like I'm just, I'm not living free. I'm not living full of joy. I'm not living full of hope. And so then the question is, well, why? How is it that we can turn our lives over to Jesus, but still somehow be stuck? And I think sometimes what I've seen in the culture is that we wind up worshiping the wrong Jesus. The culture has created versions of Jesus that aren't really biblical. If we want to be set free, we've got to go after the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. There's too many versions sometimes. Uh, Kevin DeYoung, I brought the music stand so I could leave my book up here. He's a pastor in North Carolina. He wrote a, a funny blog a couple years ago, and he talked about the versions of Jesus that are evident in our culture today. Don't be offended. Let me tell you that up front. So don't take these to heart too much. Uh, but he identifies some of the issues that we're facing is that we're not worshiping the right Jesus. And, and so he's got different versions. We've got therapist Jesus, who helps us cope with life's problems, heals our past, tells us how valuable we are, and not to be so hard on ourselves. There's a version. We've got Democrat Jesus, who's against Wall Street and Walmart, and for reducing our carbon footprint and spending other people's money. Hey, we've got Republican Jesus, equal opportunity offender here who's against tax increases and activist judges and for family values and owning firearms. We've got Starbucks, Jesus. Here we go. We're going to keep going. Who drinks fair trade coffee, loves spiritual conversations, drives a hybrid, and goes to film festivals. <laughs> We've got open-minded Jesus, who loves everyone all the time, no matter what, except for people who are not as open-minded as they. <laughs> Here's one of my favorites. There's Touchdown Jesus, who helps athletes run faster and jump higher than non-Christians and determines the outcomes of Super Bowls. <laughs> There's Martyr Jesus, 
a good man who died a cruel death so we could feel sorry for him. There's gentle Jesus who was meek and mild with high cheekbones, flowing hair, walks around barefoot wearing a sash and looks German. <laughs> There's hippie Jesus who teaches everyone to give peace a chance. Imagine a world without religion, helps us remember all you need is love. There's yuppie Jesus who encourages us to reach our full potential, reach the stars, and buy a boat. There's spirituality Jesus who hates religion, churches, pastors, priests, and doctrine. He wants us to find the God within and listen to ambiguously spiritual music. There's revolutionary Jesus who teaches us to rebel against the status quo, stick it to the man, and dream up impossible utopian schemes. And there's guru Jesus, a wise, inspirational teacher who believes in you and helps you find your center. There's boyfriend Jesus who wraps his arms around us as we sing about his intoxicating love in our secret place. And there's... <laughs> it's for you, college students. <laughs> and there's good example, Jesus, who shows you how to help people change the planet and become a better you. And then there's Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Not just another prophet, not just another rabbi, not just another wonder worker. He was the one they had been waiting for, the son of David and Abraham's chosen seed the one to deliver us from captivity, the goal of the Mosaic law. Yahweh in the flesh, the one to establish God's rule and reign, the one to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, freedom to prisoners, and proclaim good news to the poor. The Lamb of God come to take away the sins of the world. This Jesus was the creator come to earth, the beginning of a new creation. He embodied the covenant, fulfilled the commandments, and reversed the curse. This Jesus is the Christ that God spoke of to the serpent. He is the one prefigured to Noah in the flood. The Christ promised to Abraham. The Christ prophesied through Balaam before the Moabites. The Christ guaranteed to Moses before he died. The Christ promised to David when he was king. The Christ revealed to Isaiah as the suffering servant. The Christ predicted through the prophets and prepared for through John the baptizer. This Christ is not a reflection of the current mood or the projection of our own desires. He is our Lord and God. He is the Father, Son, Savior of the world and substitute for our sins, more loving, more holy, and more wonderfully terrifying than we ever thought possible. This is the Jesus who sets us free. May we worship this Jesus. Let's not worship a Jesus of our culture. Let's worship the Jesus of the Bible. If we want to live in freedom, we've got to start going after the Jesus that he teaches us about, that God sent to die on the cross for our sins. If we want freedom, we've got to live and go after the resurrected Christ. When Jesus was resurrected, he displayed his power over sin, death, and the devil. If you're feeling like you're living in captivity today, could you be worshiping the wrong Jesus? Man, I want you to know freedom. I want you to know the freedom that only Jesus can bring. But to live in that freedom, we've got to obey his teachings. We've got to understand, look, I may have been born with an evil heart, but he came to set me free. So may you live in that freedom. And then as you live in that freedom, here's the joy. You get to be a part of setting others free as well. God sets you free and says, now go and free others. So how do we do that? Well, that's why we're doing Freedom Week. To say, experience the freedom you're offered in Jesus, but now let's go and sing freedom over our city. So come back for Soak in the City on Wednesday. When you leave from this room today, you'll be given maps, directions, what places to park at Slater Hill, 6.30 till 8. Could we sing Jesus over our city as we head into the new year to say, Greater Lafayette area, you're meant to be free. So come to know the one who brings freedom. And then we're going to come back on Saturday. We do the Freedom 5K. 8.30 is the race. You can run it. You can walk it. You can volunteer at it. You can sign up on Main Street. But we want you to be a part. Why do we do Freedom 5K? It's the fight against human trafficking and sex slavery. So we support organizations Free International and Project Rescue. Free International is based in Las Vegas. They are a part of uh, going after those and helping those that are US based. And then Project Rescue is based in India and they're helping girls all over uh, Europe as well. So what I wanna do this morning is share a video from Free International. It talks about the issue we're dealing with today with human trafficking. <laughs> Ashamed of what I've done 
what I've become. These hands are dirty. I dare not lift them up to the Holy One. You plead my cause. You highlight the issue that we've got here, but they also talk about the numbers that are global as well. So while we support Free International, we also want to make sure we're making a difference globally, we make a difference locally, and, and so we also support Project Rescue, and I want you to hear from them about what they're doing in the over overseas areas as well. Charles Greenway was preaching my dad's church in Pensacola, Florida, and when they passed the offering pan that night, I laid the offering pan on the floor and I stood up and then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I want you to go to India. Started with that one phone call. It was the middle of the night when uh, Devaraj phoned me and said, Brother Grant, we have just taken 37 little girls out of the brothels and we want to start a shelter. So we broke that cycle so that children of women used in prostitution will not end up like the mothers. And that was the birth of Project Rescue 20 years ago. Our oldest, most revered missionary said this is the closest to darkness as you will get in India. The moment you head down this road, you step into a whole new level of spiritual battle. What was amazing is, as long as we all kept doing what God called us to do, God just kept changing lives. I'm grateful to Project Rescue uh, for the impact they have done in my life. I'm very thankful for Project Rescue for bringing me here and giving me this new life. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of girls have been rescued, given vocational training, sent to college, and the dark places are now becoming light. We're ready to step into the future and say, okay, God, we're, whatever that looks like for us in these next two decades, we're in. It's a project that actually does work. It's not about numbers, it's about people. We move in with the sense of urgency, we'll put an end to this so that, uh, you know, we all want it to be out of work. When we find our voices, this evil of sexual slavery can be abolished, but not without the church stepping up across the nations in a ways we never have before. The Spirit is passing the offering plate. Lay that offering plate on the ground and step into it. So as you experience the freedom that Jesus offers, may you also offer it to others as well. You can do that as we sing on Wednesday, Soak in the City. You're welcome to be a part and also on Friday or on Saturday morning, 8.30. A great time to get together to just be able to raise awareness and support in the fight against modern-day slavery. Shelly and I, we used to travel a good bit, and uh, one of the things I found interesting, I would shared this last year at our Soak in the City, that there are signs that are along the interstate in towns where there's military bases. Because what had happened is, is these jets, these F-16s, would fly and create a sonic boom. And, and in doing so, it would scare the drivers by, you know, that, that boom, you know, caused people to kind of jerk. And, and so they put up signs, the military did, that said, pardon our noise, that's the sound of freedom. And I love that. Pardon the noise, <laughs> that's the sound of freedom. But here's what I love about it. That's, that's great for our military. But I just feel like, what a wonderful banner to hang over a church. What a great banner that we could hang over Slater Hill on Wednesday. Pardon our noise, that's the sound of freedom that we're singing. And so that's what we want to offer to you this morning as, as I'm going to invite you to stand and we're going to close in song. 
May you worship the Jesus of the Bible today. May you experience his freedom. And as you leave from this place, may you lead others in that freedom too. So what we wanna do this morning is we wanna sing. We wanna sing freedom. So we will pardon your noise as you sing your freedom this morning. But let's close in song.